Okay, so thanks for joining our meetup today. My name is Desiree Seyram Sakti, and I'm the Text to Connect chapter leader for Ghana. Okay, so today we are going to um, share about one reason for not quit and how to do it the right way. Um, sorry for the break in my network. Um, I have to keep my camera off because my network is a bit unstable. Okay, so let's get. All right, so as I said, I'm your text, and we are a of TechSoup. And what TechSoup does is to help nonprofits get implemented and used. Okay, so um, we just kick off with the introduction. So um, one reason is actually a process of asking for contributions from individuals, companies, and foundations. So as a nonprofit, um, there are several ways you can raise money, and the process of you raising money from people or from companies or from other non-profits is true fundraising brainstorm on how so sorry i wasn't sharing my screen oh uh, okay so um, we'll be talking about the pros and of fundraising so what are the pros of fundraising fundraising first of all creates a sense of community yeah fundraising creates a sense of community it creates the sense of backing behind what your organization is doing, what your nonprofit is doing. For instance, you have a project you want to undertake as an organization through fundraising. You're able to raise a community to support what you're doing. So maybe you have a, a budget for a project that you want to undertake in a community or to um, raise money to help someone. Or maybe uh, um, someone that needs a kidney transfer, transplant the organization needs, wants to help, you create a sense of community to support that cause. So people are giving money towards that cause. So fundraising, first of all, creates a sense of community. The second thing we'll talk about under the post of fundraising is that it's easy to create. It's easy to start a fundraising campaign with a prevalence of technology. You can set up a fundraising campaign on your website. Um, you can campaign um, by organizing um, a lunch or, or an event, set up a fundraising campaign, even on Facebook, you can set up a fundraising campaign. There are several websites out there that can help you set up fundraising campaigns. And another thing, the third thing, fundraising also can happen any time of the year. Unlike uh, most of the activities of the organization that are planned, maybe on a certain uh, month or weeks or days of the year, fundraising um, can happen at any time. So you can set up a fundraising campaign at any time of the year, and that's the best part of it. So maybe um, something comes up in organization, something comes up in your nonprofit, and you want to just raise some sort of funding for that, which may be outside your plans or budget for the year. You can be able to raise particular cost. So it can happen at any time of the year. You don't need to put every fundraising campaign that you want to organize in the year um, inside your initial plan at the beginning of your non-profit. So now, now that we've spoken about some of the advantages of fundraising, so what are some of the disadvantages of fundraising? So the first thing that comes to mind is it's sometimes time exhausting. So why would I say fundraising is sometimes time exhausting? Because you need to put in, you need to um, draft proposals, um, draft social media posts, you need to plan a thing for demographic, who are you targeting for your fundraising campaign? You need to put all those things in place. So it's going to take your time off what you might be doing. So you have to dedicate time to be able to have a successful fundraising campaign. So it can sometimes be time exhausting. Also, it also may depend on the the nature of the project. So, yeah. So that's why I was well. The first thing that comes to mind, as a disadvantage of fundraising, as a cause of fundraising, is that it's sometimes exhausting. So you must be willing to give in the time so you can get the right result. Uh, and the next thing um, we we'll talk about is some fundraising requires effort of others. So. When you want to organize a fundraising campaign, especially fundraising campaign that are not um, online, uh, but they are in person, so you're likely organizing an event like a given Tuesday. In such scenarios, in such cases, you require the effort of volunteers because you need people to help as a venue to help with the, 
to help um, provide assistance to um, donors um, or prospective donors that will come to your event. Yeah, so you need to uh, require the effort of volunteers. So that means it requires some sort of time. And then in a way, you, you might say it requires some sort of investment, financial commitment, because if someone is volunteering for organization, you are, there is likelihood that you are going to provide certain sort of certain sort of um, financial remuneration or um, provide some sort of stepping for them, giving in their time. Yeah. And that one reason, um, or people give money to us, where they cause the high donation goes to um, the catching stories. Or so if, if you're like the fundraising company, um, your cost is noble. Who will give more if catchy? If your campaign story is catchy. What do you intend to do? So, so certain things they might not be able to hit. Your story is not really catchy. Okay. And another, which is the last disadvantage of fundraising that we'll talk about is people do not trust charities. Yeah. Most people set up charities just to be able to raise money for certain cause or personal needs or personal to meet the personal obligations. So most people do not trust charities. They don't they do not trust giving their money to charities they need to verify whether this organization is actually an organization or a some scam or yeah. So that's where probably text to comes in where TechSoup validates non-profit organizations. So um, TechSoup work with um, organizations within other, in, in, in other countries. So for Ghana, and for instance, TechSoup works with Waxi to validate non-profit. So Waxi validates whether the non-profit is duly registered within the country, which is here in Ghana. Um, that differs in several different countries as well. So people do not trust organizations. So in do business with, to give towards your cause, they need to be some sort of trust. So then how do you run a fundraising campaign? So first of all, it has to do with your planning. So how do you plan your campaign? It's an event you intend to organize. So what's the plan? What do you put into it? The first thing is to, it depends because if you're organizing a fundraising campaign, which is virtual, which is online, and then organizing a fundraising campaign, which is on-site, the efforts you put in would differ. So I'm gonna go briefly into what it takes to organize on-site. So organizing a fundraising campaign on-site, you first of all have to define your course. So what do you intend? Okay, so for instance, someone might say, Organizing this campaign to be able to raise money for schools that um, schools in deprived communities. So that is a cause. So you need to define your cause. What is the story behind that cause? In this, for instance, I would say in the school, yeah, there are no textbooks. The classroom do not have um, furniture. So that's the campaign. So you have define your cause. Then you know what and what needs to be done then you need to set your fundraising goals. So setting your, the next thing is to set fundraising goals. Setting your fundraising goals means setting up how much you need for that campaign, how much money is required to be able to run that campaign successfully. So that will determine how much you're going to ask your donors for or how much you're going to let your donors know, okay, we are raising $20,000 towards this campaign. Um, then your donors will know, okay, I can give $1,000 towards that campaign. I can give $2,000 towards that campaign. I can give $500 towards that campaign. I can give a dollar towards that campaign. So you need to have your fundraising goals. And then you need to set time frame as well. So in, in, within your goal, you need to set time frame that, okay, this particular fundraising campaign is going to start from November 1st to, let's say, November 20th. And then within that time frame, we need to be able to raise this particular amount of money. So those are your fundraising goals. The next thing you do is to set up a budget. Okay, every project requires money. So first of all, you need to set up a budget for that campaign. How much money is going to go into the campaign? How much money is going to come out of that campaign? And then you need to set up how much you're going to gain as a result of that campaign to run the course. Because it's an on-site campaign, that means money is likely to go into the organization of the fundraising event, if there's going to be one. 
like I mentioned earlier on, under the cones of fundraising or the disadvantage of fundraising, where you have to um, give some remuneration to volunteers that will go to the fundraising events. So you need to set up fundraising events or the fundraising campaign and also set up a budget you need for to raise as a result of the fundraising, how much do you want to gain from that fundraising? Then the next thing is to set up your target audience. Who do you intend to reach through that campaign? Are you intending to reach the working class? Are you intending to reach, who do you intend to reach to, with your campaign? What is the demographic, the age, the gender? What, so that becomes your, target audience, you need to set that in place so that you know how to run your um, campaign. Yeah. Then after you've been able to set up that campaign successfully, when people begin to give into your course, begin to donate towards their course, you need to keep them in the loop how much you've raised. So you tell, you, you are basically, we raised $5,000 out of the $20,000 you wanted to raise. You've raised um, 6,000, so you keep, your donors up to date, and then your community or your target audience. I can also still, I can, I can give more so that they can be able to meet. Yeah, somebody can also see the same. Okay, I can also give this to us. That is setting up your target audience. Then the same thing happens with an online campaign because whether the, your campaign is on site or online, there's, there's still going to be situations where you have to get back to your audience or your donors. So that they know that okay they're giving towards this course and they are getting this from this course so okay yeah so you need to keep them in the loop about what is going on in your campaign so quickly i want to go into how to plan an online fundraising campaign the steps are similar just that the approach might be different so in the same vein you have to define your your need um write your copy, copy can be update interest keepers so let's say teaser for instance right Catch stories to post on your social media platform. Update, that's updating um, people on how much has been raised. And then interest keepers, so you keep them up to date on the campaign and feedback. So technically, whether it's an online or on-site campaign, the steps are similar, but the approach differs. Because for the online fundraising campaign, you are not going to be organizing an event. So you're organizing the event online, you're organizing your campaign online, you're using social media, you're using Facebook, you're using a website to raise your campaign. So you need to, just as a way you keep your donors up to date on what you're doing, how much you've raised towards the campaign, you have to do the same thing with the last thing before we run up this session is hands-on demo on setting up a fundraising campaign. So um, before I come to the hands-on demo, which is the last thing we're going to do, uh, I'm going to give you um, some options, okay, some options where you can raise fundraising online. So we have several fundraising platforms. So we have GoFundMe, yeah, I'll host the one that works quite easy in our space, GoFundMe, that's in our, for our demographic is GoFundMe because some of the 